Flux Raider, it's a vibe. Now the Flux Raider seeks to do something that a lot of other guns cannot. For instance, the PCC or pistol caliber carbine takes an AR platform or kind of really any other platform and make it as small and compact as possible. Maybe you're folding the stock over, maybe you're making smaller mags, but you still have that larger platform that you're trying to scale down. On the other hand, there's downsides to pistols, one of which is they're very difficult to shoot at distance because you just don't have that stability. So yes, the Flux Raider is a super cool gun, but that's really not the important part. We wanna show you guys a couple things we're curious about. Uh, number one, at what point when shooting at distance does the Flux Raider become a more viable option than just your concealed carry handgun, taking into consideration how quick or slow it is to deploy from a bag, which is the ideal setup and carrying you know, style for this. Then also uh, a couple different variations, how we have it set up, a couple different ways to set it up and what we find to be the best for us. And then also some bag configurations. So we've got a plethora of different small sling bags, which one we have found to be great and cheap and effective and look like a normal bag and not a tactical bag. So with that being said, we're gonna clean up all this stuff and change clothes and hop into it. Quick disclaimer for you guys, the Flux Raider, the chassis itself was sent to us from Flux. The gun belongs to us, the slide was sent from Agency. The aim point is ours, the ammunition and magazines are ours. The Surefire XVL2 was sent to us from Surefire. And uh, with that in mind, now you know our relationship with uh, these companies and how we actually got these parts. Right off the bat, just looking at this thing, it is a very unique design. It does not come across like an MP5 or an... Uh... There's no such thing as very unique. <laughs> Forgot it's about either that. unique or it's not. It can't be more unique by being very unique. It's it's unique. Continue. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so ergonomics with this thing will cause you, at least for me, to get a lot of practice before you're actually comfortable with it. It's uh, it's not the same as any other platform that I've at least played with. So how does it actually work? Well. You have a brace, and to release that brace, there's a, a tab on this side. Push that down, and you have some Picatinny sections on the side to add accessories if you want. You'll also notice that this gun has an extra magazine on, on its frame. So if you want to just drop your primary magazine, you can either push this one on this side, or you can push this button up on the front, and that will drop your primary. If this is locked to the rear and you want to do a speed reload and swap these two, there's a tab under and kind of behind your secondary magazine. If you press both, it will drop both at the same time. You can insert and then hit your slide stop or slide release. Now on that note, because you have your brace on this side, I have a hard time. I don't have the biggest thumbs. It can be difficult to actually get contact and hit that slide release. So I still am having to insert the magazine and with my support hand drop the slide on that side. And that's probably my biggest gripe because it feels like a pistol. I'm so used to actually reaching up and hitting that with my primary thumb as opposed to using my secondary thumb. So that's kind of how that gun works. Drew, shooting this thing, does anything stand out to you as far as what you love or dislike? Uh, I don't like this charging handle that's on this agency slide. I would like it if I trained with this a lot. Sure. Um, and that's gonna be the common theme here is because this, don't look at this as a P320, a pistol or a subgun. This is an entirely new platform and you should treat it as such. So if you have it, you need to get some serious reps in with it to become truly proficient with it. <clears throat> and if I had that 
you know, already, I'd be glad I had this because it is kind of nice to just be able to rack it like this. But the thumb placement definitely messes me up because I naturally want to go high on here and that will induce a malfunction. The other thing was the safety. Uh, out of the box, the safety is very difficult to manipulate, but even with just a couple hundred rounds, which we've put through it at this point, uh, it is loosening up. So start stiff, go soft. You guys know how that goes. Um, beyond that, uh, I do like the QD swivel. That's a good point. This is a really good. This is a really good spot for it. It it hangs nicely. Wow, this is getting bad. It hangs nicely from a from a from like a one point, right? Yeah. Um, but I would say this is my main gripe. Although, this is not a part of the flux. Sure. And with training, all of that stuff can be worked out. With that being said, let's keep shooting it and move to the next drill. Yeah. Cool. Guys, real quick, we have to thank some of our sponsors of this episode. First and foremost, gadgets like this are super cool. There's a lot of kinks that need to be worked out and it takes time to actually ensure that they run and function the way that you intend them to. You wanna know what doesn't need to be proven and tested in your hands after your own ammo and time and energy goes into it? Gear like this. This is a TAPS rig that we got from Venture Surplus. Who is Venture Surplus and what do they do? For those who don't know, they sell gear who has, that has been tested and proven throughout not just our military, but a lot of different militaries to prove, yep, this system works really, really well. Now they're also gonna be able to get that for you at a surplus price point. So you're gonna save a ton of money on proven gear that's high quality and has been issued and used for years. This isn't the only chest rig that they have. They have a whole list of different ones that they have to offer. And additionally, if you're looking for some higher end stuff that has been tested and proven, you're gonna to wanna to go check out Steel Industries. Steel Industries is one of the fastest growing and biggest night vision companies out there. They even offer the chance for you guys to hand select your own tubes. They don't charge you any extra money for it. So if you're gonna go buy proven gear, fancy night vision, go check out Venture Surplus and Steel Industries. Guys, as I'm sure you're aware, we are fully on board with the uh, total armament of the people. I think that an average civilian should have all the means at their disposal to defend their way of life from enemies foreign and domestic. But the truth of the matter is, is that in the times that we're in right now, before you go and spend money on a fancy flux setup or a suppressor or a night vision setup, you gotta make sure your food, your water, your energy, all of that is squared away. Um, if that's all squared away ahead of time, you don't necessarily have to use all of this stuff, uh, except to defend it, of course. Um, and that's why my Patriot Supply is awesome. I've been a customer of theirs for a long time, almost a decade. And right now you can go to preparewithdc.com, save some money on a three month food supply. Plus they've got MREs, emergency water. They've also got some uh, battery banks and solar power stuff. They are one of my go-to companies. And right now you can save some money. So get your stuff squared away before you start investing thousands and thousands of dollars into this carry considerations you know as average everyday americans the real question is where does this fit into our lives can it and even should it um, to carry this with you you're going to want some kind of like really nice bag or like a sling bag that's where little things like this like this patagonia adam stealth come into play i had uh, the original flux which was for a glock 19 which fit perfectly in this thing but when you're shopping for a bag don't just look for the perfect bag size you're gonna to wanna to check out the bag opening and does that opening, is it is it conducive to actually pulling out the gun or do you get hangs and snags? And so this one for us was a huge no-go even though it worked with the original. But take something like this Ozark Trail, $24 pack from Walmart that's with tax. This thing, after going to REI and Columbia and all these different bag shops in Nashville, <laughs> believe it or not, Walmart is the one that I decided upon because the opening, it will open fully, which means I can quickly rip it open and pull it out and it's good to go. There's not a lot of stuff in here to snag on and it's the perfect size and fits great even with Extendo magazines. And additionally, you have some spots to put extra mags, extra ammo, extra just stuff. And it doesn't look tactical. It just looks like a normal person bag that you could wear to a coffee shop. You could wear it when you're out hiking. So something simple like this is amazing. And let's, you know, it's Walmart, it's Ozark Trail. It's not made great. So, but for 20, 20, 24 bucks, I like three of them, burn through them. Um, beyond that, we have some other bags. Josh, you want to take these? Sure. All right, cool cats and kittens. So those are phenomenal bags for the size, but what if you want to actually be able to carry more stuff 
than just the gun itself. You may want to consider things like tourniquets, radios, chem lights, uh, gas masks for that matter. If you're going to be taking something more than just a concealed carry pistol, what are some good options? The color, the size, it just kind of looks like a camera bag. Also, you should note a lot of camera equipment like the bags, they're so well organized and made to protect high quality items that are not that durable and they have a lot of really good storage and organization. Additionally, you'll notice that there's some Velcro opportunity here and we'll get to why that is so valuable. But one more thing to note, a lot of good companies that make tactical equipment like bags, they will put a big pull tab on this side. What if you go buy one of those Walmart $24 bags and you're fighting to actually to, to get to that? Well, you can always take some 550 cord or uh, <laughs> electrical tape or something like that and make yourself a big pole so that you can easily deploy this thing too. Get creative with your equipment and gear. So this fits really well and you'll notice that because it fits nice and snug, <laughs> also kind of like Drew's uh, bags, it's not gonna move around a ton. But once you start to get up to a bag that doesn't have a full ton of stability or support, it's also a large bag. Does it fit? Yeah, absolutely. But what what's, you're gonna start to find is as you move around, you're gonna have to be like, oh shoot, just one sec. Where are my keys, my helmet, my flashlight, the Mary Poppins setup, ah, here it is. And that starts to not be so conducive for finding something quickly. It's the same theory as having a holster on body and that gun is moving around a whole ton. It may be comfortable because it can move around a bunch, but when you go to actually grab that gun, it's never in the same place twice and that starts to become very inconsistent. So what if you do have a larger bag with some of that Velcro like I mentioned? So here's a bag that I use pretty much every day. If I have a larger pull tab, first thought, maybe consider if this really is a scenario where you're taking a gun like this with you, swapping out your computer and just throwing plates in there. You can easily fit that in there. And then also if you do have Velcro, Vertex does a great job of this. I know a bunch of other companies do as well. Taking some piece of Velcro and tying this down at a consistent location so that when you go in to grab that gun out of the bag, whether it's being deployed around you or going onto a table, maybe you're getting under the table, inside of your car, wherever it is, you can easily reach in and grab that and it's gonna be consistent every single time. Now, what about bigger guns as well? For the sake of the fact that we're talking about small compact guns, compared to that PCC as mentioned earlier, this is a nine inch nine mil takes Glock mags, it's an awesome little gun, and it has some cool ergonomics, but just for size comparisons, you can now see that little Patagonia bag or that Walmart bag that Drew was talking about. This gun is very, very small in comparison to something like this. But bags are not the only carry considerations. Let's talk about one more option. Maybe you're carrying your Flux Raider in an office setting and you have to get from office, from work to home. Maybe you're taking the bus, you're walking, you have a bicycle, a motorcycle, and you wanna be able to have that gun on body at a faster access than just a backpack. It's not doing me any favors. It's not something you're gonna to wanna to wear on your first date, but it is an option. So this is just held by a one point sling. If I wanna speed up my zipper process, I can put a larger pull tab on there, kinda of like we already talked about. From here, I can still shoot this, not exactly like a full length pistol, but kinda of like something like an MP5 with a sling or an MP7 with a bungee sling. I obviously can still deploy this and shoot with a brace. Just thinking about how we can actually make a system like this work, is it the perfect option? I don't know, maybe for you it is, but it's worth thinking through ways that we can actually carry and deploy a tool just like this. So when does the Flux Raider become a more viable platform than a concealed carry handgun, right? So the Flux in a bag is to me, to us, the ideal situation, the ideal setup. So this drill is gonna require me to deploy the Flux from a bag, whereas Josh is going to be deploying a handgun. So we're, right now we're at seven yards. Speed is a big deal, so I'm thinking this is gonna be a lot slower, not super viable, but as we back up, that may change. So let's figure it out. Cool, stand by. Two, two, five. Nice, dude. Seven, oh, eight. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you can shoot this with just like one hand or you can shoot this like a normal pistol. In our experience, because the P320 is a P320, 
if you don't have a super solid shooting platform or like grip on this, especially with the flux, this flops around a little too much and it just can't reciprocate correctly. Yeah. So for the purposes of the rest of this video, we're pretty much gonna always deploy the stock. Here's the thing, hitting the stock button doesn't take a lot of extra time. Now you also may be wondering, why did I, have, why did I not have a round in the chamber? Well, we are shooting a P320 and I'll just say that. Uh, also with bag guns, I do like to keep them not hot, um, but I just run it cold chamber, safety down, so safety off, and then rack one in and it's good to go, so. <laughs> 404. 404, I'm curious, I'm gonna check it. One Charlie. Eight thirty-three. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember if this actually deployed all the way. Like, what am I doing? Also, with this charging, like this uh, little charging handle on the side, I took a moment there because I, my naturally went up like this, which would be a, a terrible experience. And that probably like that little brain fart that I had for like a second was like, oh, I'll put my thumb down. So, how long was it? At least you fixed it. Eight thirty-three. Yeah, so it's like a second longer than last time. Almost you want to know six. what's strange? Yeah, one, two, three, four. Five, six. You actually have height over bore on that thing. I didn't even think and about we that. Don't, we don't tend to think about that on pistols, yep. but she's uh, she's already up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, close to the same as what we see on, it's a little lower than an, on an AR, but. Yeah. Four, five, eight. Okay. Eight nine nine. Had a couple flyers. Yeah, I'm still drifting left. Still good shots though. Moving out this direction still for 30 yards. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. six. Yep. And that's shooter. Sure. At this point, it's shooter. Here's the thing. I've shot with Nick Young before. Absolute world class shooter. I've watched him shoot in low light at 200 200 yards with a handgun. His Walther PDP. Consistent hits on a zone steel. So a lot of this comes down to how good are you? A lot of you aren't good at 30 meter shots with a pistol. Some of you are fantastic at that. So that's something to consider. Your own personal skill level will have a huge impact on when this actually becomes helpful to you. One thing to keep in mind is most of us have been training with concealed carry handguns for a very long time. The whole draw process, we have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dry fire reps of clearing the garment, getting it out of the holster, and shooting. Well, unless you train to that same standard with a bag gun, your deployment is never gonna be as fast or as consistent. So it may take me two seconds one run and three seconds the next run, or five seconds the next run. If you're gonna be carrying a bag, make sure you're putting in the dry fire work to actually deploy it from that bag. Um, it's gonna make a big difference in terms of your consistency in deploying it. Agreed. Six two two. Okay. Nine two seven. One, two, three, oh four. Yeah, so I must have thrown two. Okay. Okay. Delta Charlie. Alpha. 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 All six. So I need to take a little bit more time. Sure, and some of that's just deploying, deploying the gun from the bag. Yep. Let's push back a little bit further, but already your accuracy is all rounds on target is a win. It's actually easier to shoot at distance with this than it is to shoot with this up close. I'll be honest, like it's easier to shoot with a handgun within 25, 30 meters so far. Um, also, I just bought this bag literally yesterday. So my first reps with the bag are out here doing this. Uh, so it's not, I'm not the fastest at it. When we first got this, we tried throwing a can on there. These notoriously are very, very finicky. Not just the Flux, but the P320 pistol as a whole are very finicky when it comes to shooting suppressed. Long story short, we pulled the comp off, we put it back on, uh, didn't 
red Loctite it, it started to come loose and was absolutely causing some accuracy issues. Now, here we are back to just a thread protector. Let's take it back to 100. And that's true kind of across the board despite what kind of gun you shoot. Even with Glocks, when you start adding on different kinds of barrels, comps, suppressors, different internals, you're Magazine gonna have extensions, slide barrel, uh, action springs, yeah. the, everything. Everything can influence how it performs. The guns that I see fail most often are the custom ones, custom Glocks, things like that. So the P320 with it being even more finicky and then putting it into a flux, it's like you better keep it simple or if you are going to do something fancy like a comp or a suppressor, just know you're going to have to put in some time, research, and probably quite a bit of money into testing out different parts to see what actually runs consistently. So let's see how that does and let's go. I know there's a lot of guys that can do 100 yards consistently on a small reduced C-zone steel. However you need to do it, you got six shots. Standing, kneeling, prone, I don't care how you do it. Okay. Just try and get your best six shots on. Okay. And if I have to change positions, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's on the way. Jeez. All right, turn it. Uh... I gotcha. Feel like a squib? Yeah. No, I didn't feel like a squib at all. Felt like, that's exactly what it felt like. And that may have been one of mine, but that's not bad ammo. That's Winchester. Well, I'm glad that the P320 didn't blow up on you. Mm -hmm. First try, first round impact in 100 yards, pretty quickly too. We'll check the time box on that. What was my time? Uh, first shot, 7.3. Okay, 7.3, not bad. Um, just don't let Josh load your mags for you guys. Okay. All right, let's do it again. I couldn't have done that if I tried. Stand yeah. by. Okay, so here's what I'll say about 100 yards. Between 35, 40, and 75 yards, this definitely is easier to do You know, repeat hits. Uh, at 100, because this is so small, it's actually harder than with an AR. With an AR, you've got a nice platform, you can get right, nice and tight and everything. With this, you're still so compact, it's kind of everywhere. So. At the distance that I wish this thing was ultra awesome, which is 100 yards, it's a little difficult to shoot. So some of that has to do with training. So we're isolating one variable, which is the shooter. Josh is gonna shoot both the Flux and his concealed carry Glock at 50 meters, just to get an overall accuracy assessment of the two different builds. Um, and to see if that stable shooting platform actually makes a difference at this point. So you good, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, both guns are probably just about the same level of accuracy. Exactly. But, you know, in theory, that should give me a lot more stability. All right. You want to beep or not? No. Let's go dot down one. Thank you. Group of five. Your splits were uh, two seconds and a quarter. Thank you. Well, it like that's fair. That's know, that's a good point. That's a yeah. measurement you should know. Yeah. Because with your pistol, you may be slower. Or faster. That's true. That's true. So very inconsistent. Right. Splits because. Yep. You're working Sensor. to get it back on the target when anywhere from two seconds to four seconds. Okay. So let's go take a look. Flux is on the left, trying to hold here. Uh, you could say that if that broke the line, three of which were in the A zone. But as far as a human torso is concerned, yeah, man, those are all inside of the rib cage somehow. And then my pistol 
He... I've seen you shoot better than that at 15, yeah, but... Yeah, I agree. That dot locked again. Why is this working now? Because... Probably because we have a thousand rounds through it, or what? I would say so. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that's freaking wild. In fact, it makes me want to put a few more baffles on there. Okay, so what setup is this right now? This is the stronger of the two agency springs that came with the slide. Okay. And the can is the Erector 9 from Q with three baffles installed. Just to be clear, we tried a bunch of different suppressors and configurations and couldn't get any of them to function properly. I shot 200 rounds trying to get this to cycle with three different cans. Dang, that's a, okay. that's a lot of money, Josh. <laughs> Anything for the video. <laughs> the point is, uh, I think the gun is certainly changing as we're shooting it. And that's something a lot of people will say about like, take Glocks. Yeah, sure. Man, but they, there's, you know, they're so wobbly and they're, they're sloppy out of the box. Yeah, because they're built like AKs. They just work. They're not built for precision. Whereas you get agency parts on here, not just 320, but agency parts. Very tight fit. Everything from the barrel to the slide to the guide rod. And super high quality just requires a little bit of break-in. Another thousand rounds. Okay, well, that would have been a whole lot more fun to shoot today if it was suppressed. Give me a three round fast burst. So just like what we talked about before, this is an entirely different weapons platform and you need to devote the time and energy into learning it and making it second nature and not just owning it and having cool pictures. It goes way beyond that and you need to put some actual time into it. As soon as you add night vision, the difficulty creeps up a little bit higher. Uh, and those uh, imperfections in the shooter come out even more, and the gun for that matter, but uh, like the charging handle still getting in the way, um, the light placement, as it's as good as it can get outside of it being on the side and then having a pressure pad over here, but activating it and then like rolling it, <sighs> rolling it back into place, it's all challenging, can be worked out sure. with enough practice, but one of the things that we did up here was we added a Unity riser with, uh, what is this? It's a SIG Romeo, we'll throw up the model number, but it's a 4T, it's at a lower one third height on a standard AR. And then with a Unity riser, she's up there. But with the problems that we would have had with an Acro at the location that it was at for daytime shooting, passive aiming just wasn't a solution. This, how does it work with your dual tubes? If this works good with the dual tubes, uh, even still, I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit of bump. Bump. Yeah. So uh, I see all these videos of guys running acros and optics mounted right here with nods, or actually I see pictures. I don't see videos. Sure. And I think that's probably a big thing. Now maybe someone has figured it out, but there's just enough recoil that if this optic were back here, I'd be smacking my tubes all night long as opposed to an extra inch forward. Yeah. So night vision, Added difficulty. Make sure you know your stuff during the day before you try to shake it out at night. Final thoughts. Drew, watch your lips. All right, uh, it's a cool gun. It's gonna take for me a lot of reps and a lot of shaking out before I would consider taking this in a bag gun as a device that I might actually try to defend my life with. And I must say, I don't blame any one of these companies to begin with. There's a handful of different brands on here and yes, we have enough ammo that uh, should, should cause us to understand how the gun works. But because there's a handful of different brands, there's comps, muzzle devices, suppressors, magazines in different locations, a laser in a location that's new to us, unique controls, one may even say very unique controls, right? I'll allow it this time. Okay. And uh, we've also played with optics at varying heights, the, the stock, the length of pull, excuse me, the brace. The length of pull is pretty compact. It's a nifty little gun, and it is not at this time reliable. That's the configuration that we have it in. Yeah, I would agree. We've had high highs and low lows all throughout the day. Times when we've wanted to just like, 
you know, be done with the video. And then other times where it's like, oh, this thing is running awesome. Same thing with the can. As soon as we got the can working, it's like, this is sick. And then, you know, now that we're a thousand round, over a thousand rounds in, the can starts working. And then within a hundred rounds, it's not working again. So I think this is a great example of if you are going to go this route, scale back, maybe don't go Gucci at first and just try it in a basic P320. Mm -hmm. I think you may have better results, don't know for sure. That's just my educated guess. Yeah. Um, beyond that, it was a very fun gun, but we've also had a very frustrating day. Yeah. I will say, I think that almost all of this stems from it's built on the P320 platform which I'm not a fan of whatsoever. Whenever I ran the original Glock Flux, zero issues at all. Um, but because the P320 is a finicky gun to begin with, it just exacerbates any change that you make to it. That's my personal opinion. It's kind of like buying a Roland Special on a Glock. All of the upgrades that you can think of and having problems with it. And you're not sure if it's because of the comp, the recoil spring, or the mag extensions that you have on there. Not a perfect example because this has its own shorter list of issues, but if we had started with a build and just taken, like Drew said, a P320, we could start to diagnose, oh, the issues arose when we put that threaded barrel in, or hey man, I know how to run this system and I'm going to add a laser. There's only one thing for me to learn at a time. That'd be quite a bit easier to, uh, to do than just technically a battlefield pickup uh, on a flat range like we did today. It does have its place. Its place is very niche mm -hmm. for you to like really realize its full um, capacity. Would I recommend it for average everyday Joes? Only if your needs fit that niche and if you put a lot of training into learning the manual of arms and being not just knowing it, but it being second nature. I will say that Flux is personally one of my favorite companies because they are one of the few companies in this industry that is actually trying to do something new. And when, anytime you're trying to do something new, you, you know, you've got to build upon that platform. So I'm impressed by the Flux, or the overall build, I think we should take a step back from and, and reset, but um, yeah, that's my, that's, that's my honest opinion. Yeah, that's fair. The biggest, the biggest frustration out of all this is that I was not proficient on this platform within a thousand rounds, Yeah, which is evident that it takes time to learn. It's not like a lot of other guns out there. I will say the Flux guys are very proficient on this. Yeah, that's a good product. point. They shoot it all the time. They have point. awesome videos. They've diagnosed a lot of this stuff. Um, and if you are wondering what cans can and, and don't work, they've got a, we'll put a link in the description to a document that shows like user data that's input, like, hey, I've had, I have 10,000 rounds with this can and this ammo and it all works great. So you can figure out kind of what works and what doesn't off that. But um, I think for us, we're gonna go back to the drawing board, simplify this thing and maybe do a Flux 2.0. Sounds, like, sounds like fun to me. I definitely wanna get good with this thing. Sure. We got going on today, Drew. Oh, you know, just a little uh, Steve beating the living crap out of me. Should be good. <laughs> yeah, you look like how I feel like you think you look. Reset. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. That totally just like. Boo!